This is another very typical question you can get on your AS Maps exam involving differentiation. So the credit goes to Cambridge because this is their question. And please check my website explainingmaths.com for all my free resources. It says a solid rectangular block has a base uh, of 2x by x centimeters and the height of the block is y centimeters. The volume is 72 centimeter cube. Okay, that is important, the volume. Then they say express y in terms of x and show that the total surface area of the block is given by this particular formula and as you can see there's no y only x is as a variable okay well it's always a very good idea to start with a sketch so uh, we have this rectangular block let's make uh, this cuboid there we go and the base is 2x by x and what do they say about the height it's y and the volume is 72 now we all know how to find the volume of a cuboid because we do length times width times height. So in this case that will be 2x times x times y and that has to equal 72. So 2x squared y equals 72. There you go. Um, that is an equation you have created. Um, what about the surface area now? The surface area is the sum of the areas of all the faces. So if we write that down, let's do that over here. A equals, let's start with those faces on the side. Yeah? So that's this one. And of course, on the other side, it is the same. What is the area of this face? It's X times Y. So that will be X, Y, but we have two of them. There we go. Plus, let's do the front side. It's going to be two X times Y. So that is two X, Y, two, x y and we also have two of those eh? front and the back so two times i'm going to change that into a four straight away there we go so we've done the side within the front and the back now the top and the bottom is going to be 2x by x and again we have two of them so i'm going to say immediately 4x squared there we go so that is the surface area in terms of x and y but i've got to show that the surface area uh, can be simplified into 4x squared plus 216 over x. Um, and the show that question basically means that is the answer. Now this is the answer key. And we have to uh, do some workings and get that particular answer. Right? We've got to show that that is true. Well, they have x's and we have x and y here. So we need to get rid of the y. And we can do that by using this formula. Because if I make y the subject, it's going to say 36 over x squared. Do you understand why? Yeah? 72 divided by 2x squared, so 36 over x squared. And then I'm going to substitute that information into this particular equation. So it says 2x times y. So 2x times 36 over x squared. There we go. Plus 4x times y, 36 over x squared, plus Four x squared. Now let's work out those brackets. So that's going to be, I'm going to do a few steps in one now, 72x over x squared. So that's going to be 72 over x. And then over here, we're going to have four times 36, 120, uh, 144x over x squared. So that is 144x plus 4x squared. And if you combine those like terms, so we start with 4x squared plus denominator is the same, 72 plus 144 is 216. And as you can see, that is the same as what they said. So we have shown that that is correct. Okay, very good. Let's continue now. Given that x can vary, find the value of x for which a has a stationary value. Now, what is a stationary, uh, stationary value? That's where the gradient is zero. Okay, so at a maximum or at a minimum. Yeah, the gradient is zero. So let's find the gradient of a. I'll do that over here. So first I will rewrite it because that fraction I don't really like. We don't like fractions, do we? But that's the same as x to the power minus one. So to find the gradient, I do 8x, yeah, which is 2 times 4, and then the index uh, is decreased by 1, plus 216 times minus 1, so that will be minus 216, and then take one way away from the index becomes minus 2, okay, and some students then put a 0 there, but minus 1 
take one away is minus two. All right, and that is the same as 8x. I don't like those negative in this is minus 216 over x squared. Good. Find the value of x for which it has a stationary value. So I'm going to say that has to equal to zero. And then I'm going to work that out. So uh, there's several ways of doing that. Um, I need some space. I will continue in blue. It's getting quite messy. 8x equals 216 over x squared. And then you can cross multiply if you like. 8x to the power of 3 equals 216. I'm quickly grabbing my calculator because 216 divided by 8, I don't want to make a silly one now, 27, that's what I thought. So x to the power of 3 is 27, so you take the cube root, so x equals 3. So that is the value of x for which it has a stationary value, eh? for which means that the derivative equals to 0, stationary value. Moving on quickly, find the stationary value. Yeah? So what is y or a in this case? Find the stationary value and determine whether it's a maximum, yeah? so a mountain, or a minimum, so a valley. Well, let's start with the first part. What is the stationary value? So a, we're going to substitute the value 3, yeah? because we just said that x is 3, into the equation. So 4 times 3 squared plus 216 over 3. 3 squared is 9 times 4, 36. And then 216 divided by 3, 72 plus 36, so 108. That is the value. Uh, that's the first part. But then it's the maximum or minimum. Now there are several ways of doing that. Um, I'll do it in black here in the center. I have some space left. I do apologize. It looks very messy, but um, I don't have a lot of space on this screen. How can you find whether it's a minimum or maximum? Again, several ways. I always prefer to look at the second derivative. So that is the derivative of the derivative. So um, let me see. This is the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of that particular function. So that's going to be 8 uh, plus 216 times 2, 432 x to the power minus 3. There you go. So in positive index notation, 8 plus 432 to the power x3. And then we're going to evaluate the second derivative for that particular value of x3 and see whether it's positive or negative. And when that is positive for this value, it is a minimum. And when that is negative for this value, it will be a maximum. Okay. So, um, a, I'm going to do that in this corner now, A, uh, double prime, uh, the, double, the, the second derivative, we're going to evaluate it for x is 3, is going to be 8 plus 432 over 3 to the power of 3. And I'm just going to say that is positive, it's bigger than 0, and therefore we are talking about a minimum. There you go. So that particular stationary value, that particular stationary point, which happens at 3, 108, is going to be a minimum. Yeah? So if you would graph this particular function, you will have a minimum over there, uh, valley. Good, I hope that was useful, guys. Uh, it looks very messy. I do apologize. Again, I do not have a lot of space. If you write it down on a piece of paper, try to um, yeah, do it a little bit more structured and neater. Um, I hope it was useful. Like and share if it was, and check my website, explainingmouse.com. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.